Hi, my name is Rama Raghunathan. I'm a professor in the Green Center for Systems Biology and affiliated with the Departments of Biophysics and Pharmacology at UT Southwestern Medical Center. And I'll be doing uh, a talk in this series called Great Questions in Life Sciences, Intersections Between Biology, Computation, and Physics. Specifically, the problem that I would like to discuss is a very interesting one. It's about finding the effective variables in biological systems. So what I'd like to do is describe the nature of this problem uh, to begin with and tell you why finding these effective variables is both important but yet a difficult problem. And I'll try to propose a, uh, an approach that leads to specific problems to be of interest to people coming from quantitative sciences into biology. So a grand goal in biology uh, is to quantitatively explain the behavior and evolutionary origin of so-called complex systems at many scales. So here I'm showing biological systems at a variety of scales from the atomic scale, that is the structure and function of proteins, to things at the cellular scale, the design of subcellular macromolecular systems uh, like the flagellum, uh, or the design of cells and, uh, and tissues, and ultimately even the design principles of ecosystems. Uh, a goal is to explain the behavior and their origin at all these scales, but the problem is difficult for three reasons. The first is the problem of heterogeneity. In all these scales, system components, the things that make the parts that make up these systems, are highly heterogeneous where some of the parts and connections are much more important than others. For example, we know that in proteins, not all the amino acids act equally. In fact, there's a heterogeneity in the importance of amino acids towards the central properties of proteins, such as foldability, biochemical function, and so on. The same thing is true at subcellular systems and a more macromolecular uh, uh, systems. The importance of the parts is heterogeneous, and often it's not obvious in looking at these systems which are the parts that are important and which are less important. The second problem is that of cooperativity. That is, the systems are made up of parts, but the parts work in a way that cannot be predicted, the whole cannot be predicted from the activity of the components taken individually. These are already also potentially, you could refer this to, to this as nonlinearities in the system, so that the, the behavior of the system taken overall is not an obvious decomposition into the activity of the, of the parts taken individually. The third problem is a problem of modularity, so that different groups of the components can be grouped into quasi-independent way to uh, provide different aspects of function at all these scales. So the, the, the these existence of these properties, the fact that the parts that make up these systems, amino acids and proteins, proteins and small molecules that make up uh, macromolecular complexes and cells, cells that make up tissues and species that make up ecosystems, uh, the fact that these uh, components descriptions um, involve heterogeneous and cooperative groups imply that really what we need is a fundamental reparameterization of these systems to redefine the units of function or what I will call the effective variables as not these parts but groups of these parts that act cooperatively and ideally ranked by their relevance. And the question is uh, how can we do that? Now, the goal in doing this, of course, is to provide, in some sense, a more natural description of what a system is. It may be initially obvious or intuitive to think about a protein as made up of the amino acids, but in terms of the function of the protein, it may not be the most natural description. Groups of amino acids that work cooperatively may be a better natural description of what the system is. And in some sense, one could argue that solving this problem, providing a more natural description of what a system is, should be a necessary prelude to mechanistic studies to understand how it works. In other words, understanding how it works may be simpler if we understand the effective variables that make up a system. The question is, how can we do this practically? Well, it turns out that now with the remarkable ex expansion of techniques for massive data collection at all these scales, uh, people are developing methods for collecting, for example, many, many examples of protein structures and protein sequences and measurements of protein function. Of course, many people are working at the cellular scale to characterize the behavior of many different cell types under the background of many different perturbations, both mutations and small molecule perturbations. And even at the ecosystem scale, more recently, people have developed methods to build synthetic ecosystems and laboratories with very many replicates so that one can look at statistics of the behavior of systems at that, at that scale. So with the, uh, the, the ability to collect data of that nature, 
The proposal is to look not at individual uh, systems, but at statistics, at many realizations of a system, to see what is conserved or invariant over the ensemble. And, I, and fundamentally, the invariance of properties over an ensemble of uh, realizations of a system is itself a relevance of the system components and, and reactions. Things that are invariant over an ensemble tend to be relevant. The second uh, thing to do, since we're interested in the cooperativity of, of components, is to look at correlations or epistasis between uh, the conserved system components and reactions. And this is a basis, such a correlation analysis, is a basis for decomposing systems into their appropriate cooperative modular units, that is, the effective variables. So let me give an example of this at the scale of atoms that I've been involved with. But the approach that we're talking about here is, is should be, in principle, more general than just this uh, case study. So here uh, is an example where a protein can be thought of as made up of a large collection of amino acids that interact together. But to understand which amino acids are relevant and what are the cooperative units, in this kind of approach, one collects an appropriate statistical ensemble of instances of a protein, in this case, a protein family that shares the property of folding into that particular structure and carrying out the approximate biochemical activities. And from such a statistical ensemble, one can make a matrix of relevant correlations between all the amino acids that make up the protein. And with that kind of correlation matrix in hand, one can apply techniques such as spectral decomposition, very simple ways of analyzing information content in correlation matrices to deduce collective groups of amino acids that now more appropriately represent the determinants of protein structure and function. So this is an example at the atomic scale. But I want to point out that there are non-trivial quantitative problems at every stage of this analysis in devising this kind of an approach for more generally for all complex biological systems. And let me just illustrate the nature of the problems that need to be worked on. For example, it's not obvious when you take a statistical approach how to make an appropriate ensemble that represents the property of interest. In the case of proteins, it seems natural to, that a protein family uh, that shares the property of folding and function and an evolutionary history should be an appropriate ensemble over which statistics should be computed. But it's not necessarily obvious in many other systems at the cellular scale or at the scale of ecosystems and so on, what should be appropriate and appropriate ensemble of data to collect from which statistics can reveal the underlying uh, collective variables of the system. That's an important problem to, to solve. The second problem is it's not obvious what statistical methods one should apply to make measures of relevance and correlation given an, uh, an ensemble. And the reason for this is it depends on how the ensemble is really collected. In fact, uh, for protein sequences, one of the complications of making appropriate statistics is that these sequences are not random, uh, um, randomly selected from the space of all sequences. These sequences have a relationship to each other, which comes from the phylogeny of all the species that contain those sequences. In other words, the sampling is not random, but the sampling is on some kind of phylogenetic tree. And in such an instance, it's not necessarily obvious what are appropriate statistical measures that define the relevance of the uh, outcomes at positions or the correlations between positions. And so in general, we, one needs to work on what are the statistical methods that are appropriate to represent the statistics of an ensemble. The final problem is the question of how to decompose these correlation matrices to deduce the effective variables. In sort of the simplest case, one applies linear methods such as, uh, uh, such as spectral decomposition and so on. But it's not also obvious that those decompositions are good decompositions of this information. In general, information in these correlations in biological systems is hierarchical in nature. And for a hierarchically uh, embedded system, it's not yet clear what are good methods for decomposing them to define the uh, effective variables. So these are problems that are ripe to work on now for people coming into biology from quantitative sciences. Because if these uh, sort of questions can be addressed, uh, in general, then we have the possibility of uh, leading to really new understandings of the so-called design principles of complex biological systems, because we will understand the effective variables that underlie these systems as, I say, a prelude uh, to ultimately deep mechanistic studies 
uh, of these of these systems. Um, so these are this is an example of a problem that's appropriate and ripe today for people in physics and quantitative uh, sciences coming into biology. Thank you very much.